Louis Armstrong, also nicknamed Satchmo, was born on August 4, 1901 in New Orleans, Louisiana. His father walked out when he was born, so his mother often worked as a prostitute for money, leaving him in care with his maternal grandmother. Louis had to leave school after fifth grade to start working. Luckily, a local Jewish family gave him a job collecting junk and delivering coal, also encouraging him to sing and stop by for dinner. However, an unfortunate event occurred when Louis shot his stepfather's gun into the air during the New Year's Eve celebration of 1912. Immediately, he was arrested on the spot and sent to the Colored Waves home for boys, but this was a catalyst that started his legacy. He played the cornet, a smaller version of the trumpet, which we later see him master, and instantly fell in love with music. Armstrong began earning a reputation as a blues player, gaining the attention of Joe King Oliver, one of the greatest cornet players in town, to which a mentorship started with young Armstrong. Meanwhile, Armstrong's musical popularity grew, and he eventually replaced Oliver in Kid Ory's band in 1918, one of the most popular New Orleans bands. He also played with a band called Fate Marable on riverboats in the summer of 1919, encountering jazz legends like Vic Uderbeck and Jack Teagard. Armstrong was content with his place in New Orleans, but he was recruited by King Oliver in the summer of 1922 when a phone call asked him to join his crew jazz band in Chicago as his second cornet. Armstrong accepted and took Chicago by storm with his fiery playing. Lillian Harding, the pianist of the band, told Armstrong to cut ties with his mentor because she felt he was holding Armstrong back from joining Fletcher Henderson's orchestra, the famous African-American dance band in New York City, and in 1924, ties were cut. Armstrong's presence was immediately gobbled by the audiences as he performed a series of solos, introducing swing music to the band. However, he left the band in 1925, unhappy about the discrimination and closed minds of some of his band members, criticizing his southern speech and vocabulary, wardrobe, and coarse voice. Finally back in Chicago, Armstrong made his own band called Louis Armstrong and his Hot Five, later changing to the Hot Seven in 1928. Today, his recordings are regarded as the most important and influential recordings in jazz history with his daring rhythmic choices, swing feel, and incredible high notes. Armstrong also popularized Gat singing, a wordless improv. 1926 was a big change where Armstrong changed from cornet playing to the trumpet, an instrument he found better suited for himself. During his lifetime, Louis Armstrong accomplished many things as a first African-American. In 1936, he was the first African-American jazz musician to create an autobiography, which he titled Swing That Music. In the same year, he was the first African-American to be in Pennies from Heaven, a major Hollywood movie starring Bing Crosby. In 1927, he was the first African-American entertainer that hosted a national radio show, where he took over Rudy Vallée's Fleischmann's Youth Show for 12 weeks. Armstrong completely destroyed the box office during the height of the swing era, which made his presence still known today. By 1968, Armstrong faced heart and kidney problems forcing him to stop performing. What made matters worse was that his longtime manager, Joe Glassier, passed away in 1969. Good news in 1970 allowed him to perform again when he seemed recovered, but a heart attack sidelined Armstrong for two months after a show in New York. In 1971, he returned home to Queens, New York, he promised the public one more performance. He never filled that promise, dying in his sleep on July 6, 1971. Still, his legacy will live on, even if his body didn't. Armstrong's soul is still embodied in jazz music today. <laughs> <laughs> 